Hi everyone, I'm going to talk about the season 22 theme with the shadow clones in this video and I've already released one here with uh, some clips from the first night of trying them out and well I can tell that it's quite buggy, it's quite inconsistent, it's really um, really weird in, in, in many ways. So uh, I mostly want to discuss this now. I made a Reddit thread here as well, uh, showing a little bit of like the bugs and explaining and giving some ideas. And this is what I want to go over now. If you want to see this in action, you can watch this video here. I just released this uh, the other day. And uh, I'm also going to show this a little bit at the end here to kind of give you a, a better understanding. So what happens is in season 22, you have the fourth cube slot. This is pretty nice. This kind of works as expected. Just one issue is that it doesn't really show anywhere on the UI. You don't see it on leaderboards. You don't see it on a profile, but that might get fixed or yeah, very likely it will get fixed, I assume, because it's quite uh, integral to you know, understand you know, what builds are people are using. And um, well, for the shadow clones, there's a lot of work to be done. So I want to discuss, I want to give feedback and also want to hear your feedback and your ideas maybe of how to solve this. And don't just go like, oh, please remove it and that's it. Uh, this is not gonna happen, obviously. Uh, Blizzard, when they make season themes, they go with it, but you know, they will change it. You know, if you give feedback, if we show you know, something that's wrong, uh, they will take care. So let's go over it. Uh, first of all, there are quite some bugs. For example, clones can be duplicated by Necro, Bone Armor, maybe some other skills as well. Uh, also through teleporting back and forth. I actually didn't get to do that myself yet, but I've heard this from quite a lot of people that they just like, make an army of these shadow clones. Usually you get one when you click a pylon for one minute and uh, they just like follow you around like the Horn of Wexo and uh, they use like, you know, some abilities and, uh, you know, they have like a, a set uh, li skill list, so to say. There's three build variants for every class and uh, they you know, run around, they use Chakram and uh, impale and uh, mark for death or something. I don't know. So a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, there's like a list of um, all the builds in the patch notes that you can see here in this post. So I didn't really get to do those um, duplication things, but I've also seen someone um, actually be the clone himself. So we have this clip here, for example, um, like basically he just uh, walks to the shrine and uh, like you can already see he has this red color, which is usually like the, this clone color. And when he clicks the shrine, he doesn't even get anything. So this is um, yeah, a bit weird as well. I have no clue what happened there. I guess he clicked one earlier and somehow that bugged out and made him the clone. So yeah, there's stuff like this. Uh, it can lag out as well. Uh, clones are not attacking at all and they cannot kill you or your party members. So we had this actually we're playing with Rob and Nolfar here. And when you have sand dwellers, the clones can attack into the sand dweller reflect and they will kill your party member. So that also happens. So be careful. And um, yeah, this is also one of the issues here, I guess. So just in general though, um, the damage is really out of balance. So when I was playing support Bob, I was looking at the numbers a bit and then it was doing like 1.5 billion, 2 billion, 3 billion hits maybe. And then somewhere in there is like one skill where uh, it suddenly does like uh, 200 billion. So I don't know which one it was because I can't see anything in this visual clutter. But uh, this also happens with other classes as well. I've heard of like Spirit Barrage, like doing like five quadrillion or something, you know, one-shotting stuff. I've heard of Impale actually being extremely strong. But then there's like most of these other skills that don't do anything. You don't notice them. And uh, especially when you go a little bit higher in the, in the Greater Rift tiers, they are basically not really doing anything. So uh, I've heard that uh, at least in solo, they seem to be quite strong for certain classes. For example, solo the age, they can actually melt elites in like GR 125 or so, which is not terrible. You know, it doesn't really do much for the high end pushing, but um, yeah, at least in those tiers, that's still nice because it's like a speed farming tier or like a pushing tier for some people. And um, you know, if the clones are actually a little bit impactful in those tiers, that would be very nice. But uh, I would also like to see a little bit more usefulness in the higher tiers. Maybe they could scale a little bit with uh, the greater of tiers, maybe not exactly the same with the 70% monster HP scaling per, um, per tier, but maybe they could kind of like catch up a little bit by adding like a little bonus per tier so that, you know, they kind of get weaker the higher you go, but they still do something on like 140, 150. That would be nice. Because right now they basically one shot everything in like T16 and like, I don't know, up to like GR 80, 90 or so. And then because of the greater rift scaling, 7, 10% multiplicative bonus HP per tier, you know, it really um, falls off really fast. So because they scale with your sheet damage or with your character in some way, we haven't quite figured out what exactly it is, 
but uh, it's yeah, mostly the sheet damage, I believe. So also when you're leveling, at some points they can just you know come come out and do like millions of damage when you have like you know 10, 10k damage or something like that, because of you know your sheet damage number actually not being so much lower than what it is gonna be later on when you're like level seventy with your set and so on. So also yeah, when you when you start pushing, uh, you usually have a lot of like invisible stats that uh, don't show up in your sheet damage. You know like area damage, cooldown, resists. Um, and so on. There's a lot of things that uh, make a character stronger and make you able to push higher and so on. And uh, then, yeah, having it only focused on the sheet damage is probably not really a good idea. But yeah, these are some of the points. Um, we don't really know what's uh, scaling them and it seems really out of balance. There are some multipliers that work, some that don't, it seems. So we still have to test this a little bit more in detail, but there's a lot of things to test with this and maybe this will change anyway. So we don't know yet, but yeah. Also, you don't really see the number of clones or the remaining time. Uh, I guess it would be nice to have, it would be nice to have them like follow you through the floors because when you go to floor two and you find a pylon at the end and you go to the next floor, uh, they just stay behind. They can also um, just attach to another player and that, uh, then, then they follow around, you basically lose your clone and they go off to somewhere else. So all this stuff can happen, it's really odd. So how to solve this? Um, I have three ideas here that I mentioned as well. So the first one would be uh, make it uh, fixed damage and scale with GR tiers, kind of like a corner pylon. So I don't want to make them too strong and there's also risks that they will be abused very hard on GR150. Um, obviously, we don't want to have people just clearing the entire rift with uh, only clones, but uh, it could maybe be balanced out. You know, I just gave like some examples so that you know it doesn't matter if it's GR100 or GR150, your impale is like you know 10%, and then the wool shot is like 2%, and so on. So I think this would be nice because then it would always be kind of similarly impactful, a little bit less for the speed farming, of course, but um, this would probably be a good. Uh, good way to balance it out a bit because as I said you know it doesn't really do anything on the high tiers and it's very strong on the low tiers and then kind of in between I guess it's most important as well to have it have them impactful for like the tiers between like GR 110 and GR 130 or so because it's like the range where most people farm and push when they um, you know play enough in the season and this is also where the, the core focus is I guess but yeah the second idea here is, I think this was by Northvar, and maybe make, make them like a support player, so they kind of like follow you around and they buff you or debuff enemies, so you have like Mark for Death and Wolf Companion and a Sentry Guardian Turret. Maybe make them like some custom variations where uh, you have like, you know, extra values or you know, just to balance it out between the classes, make them feel like you actually get a big boost from them, make, have like a Crusader that has all three laws, maybe stuff like this. And then this could also change builds a little bit because yeah, maybe as a demon hunter you will consider twice if you're gonna run the wolf or maybe you're gonna use like another skill that can help you out in some way. So this would be pretty cool. This would put the focus entirely on the player and maybe you can still give them like one or two damaging abilities so that people can answer thumb with them in T16 or low GRs and then kind of like ignore the damage in the high tiers and just have them buff you. So this could be a good idea maybe to solve it because then everything is you know, exactly related to the strength of your character. And a little bit similar like this, we have the simulacrums. That's the third idea here. So why can't we just have these guys you know, work similarly and then when you attack, they will attack or uh, also maybe they can just get your skill set with your multipliers and they just use it randomly on their own. I guess that could also work so that you have kind of like an AI uh, uh, character following you around using your skills with your damage. So this would also solve a lot of these like inconsistencies and a lot of these scaling issues because everything would be tied exactly in the same way that you know your, your character works. So it's uh, it can't really you know go much beyond that or much lower than that. Obviously, uh, this might be an issue in some builds when they cast stuff automatically and you have like certain very complicated builds where you have like a, you know, a very precise setup that you have to make, like Spirit Barrage, for example, or the, the Thorns Crusader. So yeah, some of these builds would probably not really get much out of them, but uh, for the overall gameplay, I guess, this would feel a lot more smooth, a lot more consistent. So yeah. But these are just some of the points I wanted to make. Uh, maybe you have some other really cool ideas. And I would really like to hear from them. So if you have, have anything, if you have any feedback, any experiences, any bugs, any ideas. So I think you should just put it here on the Reddit thread, on the comments, uh, anywhere. And uh, I'm sure Blizzard will take notice. 
and they are also aware that you know stuff is not really working well with this right now so they will work on this and the more feedback they have the better feedback they have um, the better the season theme will become in the end i believe so this is what i want to get out here uh, if you want to see this um this video here just go check it out as well and uh, you can see it's a bit more in action of you know how how things work and uh, just just in general you know you get like a bit of an idea so this is all i wanted to share for now and uh, i hope you enjoyed my thoughts here and um, let me know what you think so i like, hope you like this video i'll see you guys next time